Leonardo da Vinci is now and will always remain a mysterious figure. We got to know him very well through his engineering notebooks. And when you see some of the drawings that he drew, you'll think, like I do, that he was clairvoyant, that he could almost see the future. And we only know that because of his engineering notebooks. This is Stephanie Kwame from the Cat Academy, and this is in the first in a series of uh, great inventors, architects, and engineers that we're going to go over. Most people know Leonardo da Vinci for his masterpieces, the mysterious smile of the Mona Lisa, the masterpiece of The Last Supper. So he was definitely a wonderful painter, but he was multi-talented in um, many, many areas. He could actually do just about anything. He was born in 1452 in Italy. That makes that 561 years ago. But if you look at one of these little pages from his notes, you'll see that he drew the first steering column and a rack and pinion gear system that are found in automobiles today. So anybody looking at that in his day wouldn't even understand what he was trying to do or what he was showing there. But uh, again, definitely something that we understand now with, with uh, our technology. He also was the first to record the vascular system, the blood system, the muscles, the bones of the human body. And he had an interest in that so that he could do his sculpture and his, his paintings would be accurate of the human body. 400 years before the Wright brothers, da Vinci invented what he called the flying machine. He developed something that we call the helicopter and a parachute. If you look at one of these drawings, you'll agree with me, it looks like a jet. Da Vinci said that he would go to sleep at night and he would dream dreams of these inventions. And then he would get up in the morning and try to put them in on paper. And he said they were just, they were not nearly as wonderful and as great as his dreams were. But again, drawing a jet five, you know, like 400 years before an airplane or a helicopter or a parachute or his flying machine. He deeply, and wa he wanted to fly in his lifetime. But we'll discover why that didn't come about. He was interested in so many things, and he was clearly ahead of his time, but he, it, to keep his interest in one thing just didn't work. He was interested in music, and he developed this interesting piano that has the tones of a cello. Uh, the statue of a horse, it's a 24-foot horse, uh, he had been commissioned to make, and he basically kind of lost interest in doing the horse, and it was never made. It, he had like a clay figure of it, and he had all kinds of things, but it was uh, uh, reproduced after he passed away. So keeping on task was a problem for him. But he did leave us a legacy of 13,000 pages of notes and drawings in his lifetime. And if you look through that book, you would see poignant pictures like the woman with her looking down. Or you would see pictures of people fighting together with every muscle and uh, every movement he was aware of because he had studied it. He was athletic in his youth, and he was also considered very handsome in his youth. And he could talk to anybody about anything, and I'm sure he could talk to you about things that, that nobody had any idea. He probably was considered quite unusual in his time. These are some quotes from him. As every divided kingdom falls, so every mind divided between many studies confounds and saps itself. And so he recognized in himself that he had such an interest in so many things that it just uh, exhausted him. But he then said, I have been impressed with the urgency of doing. Knowing is not enough. We must apply. Be willing is not enough. We must do. So he understood that he needed to apply what he, was le what he had learned. He had such an appreciation for the human body, for all of nature, 
And this is a quote. He said, the human foot is a masterpiece of engineering and a work of art. Uh, when you figure how well it works for how long it works, it's amazing. Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. So keeping things simple was important to him. So you can see that we would not know the genius if, of uh, Leonardo da Vinci if we did not have his engineering notebooks. And so an action item for our students would be start an engineering notebook. And we'd also like you to enter our two national contests. We have design something, make a difference using SolidWorks, and basically make design something that makes makes life better. We discussed in our first video that a paper clip made life better and a rubber band so it doesn't have to be fancy and your notebook doesn't have to be fancy it can be a three ring binder and you don't draw like you know Leonardo da Vinci but obviously when you come up with ideas when you write them down you can go back and uh, see what you put in and even make that better we are going to have our second annual lead dream home contest using Archicad it was very very popular last year and our student uh, projects were clearly amazing. The judges come from industry. We are not on the judging panel. They start right after winter break and ends the last day of February 2014. Winners are, winners will receive tablets and notebooks like they did last year and uh, so it's very worth it for students to enter. So I would say it would be a good idea to start learning SolidWorks and Archicad right now. We do have a nice instructor portal and on the instructor portal we have how-to videos how you do a certain project starting with beginning projects and then it gets continually harder and so you can actually learn SOLIDWORKS and ARCHICAD on the instructor portal and it's easy enough for most students to go through it on their own you are definitely invited to log into our instructor portal using your instructors login so some hints for this time for to get you started to thinking about your projects your either your lead dream home or your new invention is keep track of things that annoy you if it annoys you it probably annoys others as well think of it as an opportunity to come up with an inventive solution think like a child children have a simple way of looking at things and all things are new and wonderful to them employ curiosity and simplicity when looking for an idea you know that wonder month a wonder month of children I remember sun that was shining uh, through the window and you could see dust in the air and having my son trying to reach for it because he'd never seen it before that's what we're talking about or you could put two or more products together creatively. A cell phone is a great example. It's also a GPS, a watch, and a web browser, a camera, and more. So it's a multi-talented item and we all cherish them. So basically get started working on your uh, projects and thank you for listening.